Alrighty, so I've got the barrel in a four jaw chuck and on the steady rest and I've got it zeroed to the bore. So there is a um, old chamber, just the about maybe a eighth inch left of the old chamber that was in this barrel. And so I've got my indicator on that. And if you notice, we have that pretty much at as close to zero run out as I can get it, which those are half um, 10,000 tick marks and we're not even um, bouncing between two. So that's gonna be good enough. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and get our um, reamer set up and we're gonna start reaming this chamber hopefully. All right, so I have my PTG um, 6.5x47 Lapua um, reamer set up and this is a something I got off eBay. It's a floating reamer holder. I think it's a copy of the PTG reamer holder, floating reamer holder. It's supposed to float in all directions in case you have some misalignment. This is the first time obviously I've ever used it and we're just going to go ahead and uh, throw some lube on this and uh, essentially see what happens. Okay, we're going to be very generous with lube here. Going to tighten down our tailstock. Okay, moment of truth. We're going to go ahead and dump the lead on. Again, there is a pre-board hole here. going to go on in until we start to feel some chips. Hopefully start to feel some chips. come to a complete stop and we're going to pull our reamer out and we're going to go ahead and clean these chips off and I'm going to use an air compressor to blow out the chamber and essentially I'm going to repeat this process this exact same process over and over until we get somewhat close to our our reamed depth. Alrighty, so after taking about a million passes on this thing here, took a lot more than what I thought, about 0.25 per cut because I don't have uh, any way to flush this system out. So anyway, I've got the uh, go gauge in my Seekins Havoc hit here action and I've got the uh, ejector out and basically we're going to tighten that down now this is easy because this is goes hand tight and then we tighten this little nut here and as you can see there we have just oops tighten that down we have just slighted the slightest amount of pressure to close on the go gauge which means that i have pretty much the minimum or should mean that i have pretty much the minimum sammy um, chamber which is perfect for me because i'm going to reload this stuff if I was shooting factory ammo, maybe this would be a problem. Maybe I'd go another thousandth or two. Now, um, I'm, I haven't had the no-go gauge in, but I'm pretty sure that it's not going to close considering the uh, considering the um, you could still feel a little bit of resistance on the uh, go gauge. So no-go gauge here. And no chance that that thing's gonna close on the no-go. 
which I'm not surprised because again, there's a little bit of resistance at the end of the go gauge. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do is I've got a piece of new brass here just to make sure that I'm gonna be able to use new brass. Um, we'll go ahead and close on that, but that really shouldn't be much different than our go gauge. So I got my new piece of brass in there and we close with just a little bit of pressure. Again, I could I go ahead and run this chamber down another thousandth? I probably could, but to be honest with you, the way that it turned out, I'm really happy with it. We've got just a little bit of pressure to close on our um, Lapo brass and our go gauge, and we absolutely don't have excess headspace because we can't close on our go gauge. So, pretty happy with the way that turned out. All right, so the Seekins tenon print has a little bit of a, kind of an angle or a chamfer there. So I went ahead and cut a really slight one there. Don't know if it's exactly what they want, but I don't want any extra unsupported case, and I think that's just to help feed. So what we'll do is, as long as this feeds well, we'll leave it like that. If it doesn't, we'll come back and, and cut that just a little bit bigger, but I don't want to cut it any bigger than I have to because I don't want that unsupported case. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out of the lathe and uh, you guys will see it. All right, so being that this barrel was used and I banged it up a bunch in the lathe, now that it's finished, I've got it chucked up between centers and I've just got some uh, 320 grit and I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, basically sand the scratches out. Put a little bit of fluid on there. and just sand out the scratches. Doesn't have to be perfect. Down here on the models where I scratched a couple times getting an in and out of the headstock. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. You can see a little bit of scratch marks from the sandpaper, but it got the uh, scratches out pretty much that I made uh, getting in and out of the headstock, so. All right, we're out here on the range. This is my uh, Seekins Havoc hit with my new uh, one and eight proof six five by 47 Lapua barrel. Um, I just shot one shot through it to make sure that everything was okay. The brass looked okay, everything seemed okay. So now we're gonna go ahead and try to sight in our scope and maybe shoot a group. You guys saw these loads that we loaded, so uh, you know what they are. Let's go ahead and load a couple of them. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see how close we are. I bore sided it and I have my lab radar out. And we're just a little bit left. I'm just gonna go ahead and roll with it for now. And then we'll do, we'll do another shot and we'll adjust. Okay, we'll do a three shotter. All right. We're gonna go ahead and adjust the scope. Looks like our elevation was fine. But we need to go about one and a quarter mils to the right. Okay. That should get us pretty close. Gonna go ahead and shoot a three shot group here and uh, see how close our zeros and uh, see how they, uh, see how they grew. Not amazing, but uh, 
looks kind of promising for just uh, go ahead and loading up some random loads. Um, just wanted some rounds to go ahead and get the scope sided in. It looks like we need to come up a little bit too. Okay, good. So uh, we're pretty much ready to go. Start some load development here. Um, as you see, the velocity on the screen there um, wasn't too bad. All right, we are out here on the range. Um, this is the next day, the second day after I uh, chambered this new barrel. This is that 6.5x47 Lapua that I chambered. 25 inch, 1 and 8 twist, proof barrel. I'm in my Sinkins Havoc kit. Loophole Mark 5, 7 to 35 optic. We're at 100 yards, and obviously we're shooting off our bags today, getting velocity through our lab radar. Those dots are half inch on the target, and we just basically, I just picked a couple of random bullets to kind of get an idea of how this gun is going to shoot, and if one of them is going to be particularly good, then we'll probably go buy a couple boxes of those and do a load workup. All right, we already talked about the load data. Um, we're shooting the uh, 105 or the 140 Bowtie hollow point first. Now, uh, there is an oil shot here. I did go through and really clean the, the barrel really well after uh, the couple shots that I shot yesterday. So we're gonna probably get an oil shot on the first one, but that's fine. So, let's see how they do. All right, so that's a pretty good start there. Definitely better than we saw yesterday, but it could be that um, shooting a couple shots through and then uh, cleaning the barrel. So uh, those, we average 2,600 feet per second, it's just three shots, a 12 SD, and uh, other than our oil shot, we, were, we actually had one feet a second between the second two. So that's cool. Our uh, point of impact and our scope zero is pretty good too. We're going to do the 140 um, hybrid target from Burger next. It's going to be hard to outdo that first group there. All of these were loaded about 20,000 off the lands. Last one here, the Burger 140. All right, that one looks pretty good too. Um, that one we had better velocity, 2620 average with a 4.3 um, SD. Look how warm this barrel's getting. It's a pretty thick contour, but you can feel just a little bit of, of warmth on the outside of it. Um, next we have the 130. ELD match. Now I bumped up the charge on this one a little bit. Uh, I think I went to what 30? Uh, you'll see it up on the screen. Man, this thing sure is a sure is a shooting right now, isn't it? That's surprising. Yesterday when I shot that one three shot group, now I guess maybe the cleaning really helped. Yeah, those we averaged twenty six seventy four feet per second with a one SD, and now we'll go to the one forty. And really, the barrel's still not very warm. I guess that's the benefit of having a super thick contour barrel. Okay, and like I said, the 140s here. See how they do. Starting to be just a little bit of mirage, not making an excuse for that shot. But there is just a little mirage. I don't know if it's coming off my barrel or if it's because it's pretty sunny out. All right, so definitely really happy with that target. 
That's like best case scenario there. Those we averaged 2602 feet per second with a 5.2 SD. Now again, these were just random loads that I loaded. Um, just wanted to try a variety of bullets and I thought one of them would show better than the rest and um, I don't know if we really got any of that. But let's get over there and take a closer look.